Well, welcome. In this video, we are actually starting a brand new unit. And this unit, we are going to be starting by looking at how to solve a system. Well, there's actually three different ways that we could go about solving a system. We could solve it by graphing, substitution, or elimination. And that's what we're going to be looking at in these first few lessons. So in this video, we're actually going to focus on how to solve a system by using graphing. Well, what does that mean exactly? Well, let's look at that paragraph that's above my head here. Um, so it says, to solve a system by graphing, graph both equations on the same grid. Being very careful to count your slope accurately. The key to this method is you want to make sure that when you're graphing, that you're graphing accurately. If your graphs aren't right, your solution's not going to be right. So that is the key for this technique. Now reading on it says the point where the two lines cross is called the solution to the system of equations. So graphing is not the answer. Graphing is how we're going to show our work. It's how we're going to go about getting our answer. The actual answer though is the intersection. That's where the solution is going to be. Now a solution to a system of equations is a set of ordered pairs that make both equations true. So it's we're looking for an ordered pairs that would work, or an ordered pair that would work in both sets of equations. Now let's read that very last sentence. It says there are three different kinds of solutions to a system. When we're dealing with e linear equations, meaning straight lines, how could there th be three different possible ways to get an answer? Think about that for a second. How could we, what were three different ways that we could graph two different lines and get three different types of answers. Now hopefully one is real obvious where you could have one line being intersected uh, by another line. But how could we have two other types of solutions? Can you think of at least one more? Well maybe you're thinking that well we could have one line being parallel to another line. That would be one other scenario. Can you think of the third one? Well, maybe you came up with the idea of, well, you could have a line and another line on top of it. Well, those are the three different outcomes that we could have when we're graphing linear equations. So in this video, we will be looking at how to graph and find all three. So let's go ahead and get started by looking at our first example. Okay, so let's look at this first example where our system is y equals 2x minus 5 and y equals negative x plus 4. Now if you notice, both of these are in slope-intercept form. So let's start with that first one. I'll graph this first one in blue. So we're going to do our start with your y-intercept is at negative 5. And our slope is 2. That means from that point we're going to rise up 2 over 1, go up 2 over 1. Now you want to make sure you have plenty of points because right now I don't know where that other line is going to be. So we want to make sure that our two lines will intersect. So I want to make sure I have this one going across my grid. So we're going to connect these points now. So there would be your first graph. Now the other graph, I'll do this one in red. And this one has a y-intercept of a positive 4. Now the slope to this one is a negative 1. So we're going to go down 1 to the right 1, down 1 to the right 1, and so on. Now, I don't have to keep going because I'm just trying to find where they intersect at. Now, please still draw your line even though, um, yes, we found the intersection point. But I want to make sure that you know that we have two lines that are intersecting. So our solution to the system is that point. Now, we have to write down what the solution is because, like I mentioned earlier, graphing is showing our work. The actual answer is where they intersect at. That's the coordinate 3, 1. Now what that means is that this is the only point that will work in both equations. So for example, we could check our answer and make sure that this does work in both of them. So I'm going to put 3 in for x and put 1 in for y. So in the first equation, I'd have 1 equals 2 times that 3 minus 5. Well, when I simplify the right side, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. So that checks. That works out. But I can't just stop there. I have to show that it works in both um, equations. So I'm going to try that in the other equation as well. So 1, if I put 1 in for y, I'm going to put the opposite of my x value plus 4. So I get the opposite of 3 is negative 3, plus 4 is 1, 
and that checks too. So it works out where 3, 1 works in both of the equations. Pretty simple process. In fact, I want you to go ahead and try this next one on your own. So please pause this video so you can try it and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, so let's see how you did. So this first one I'm going to do in green would have a y-intercept of negative 3 and a slope of 1 half. So we'd go up 1 and to the right 2. Now if you go backwards, we'd go down 1 and to the left 2. Then let's graph the other one. I'm going to do that one in purple. That one has a y-intercept of 0. So you start at 0 and it's got a slope of 2. So you're going to go up, and to, up 2 to the right 1, which really doesn't help us. So we want to go backwards. So we're going to go down 2 and to the left 1 until you find where those two lines intersect. So that would be at that point there. So our solution is going to be the coordinate negative 2, negative 4. And to check it, to make sure that that truly does work in both of those equations, we're going to start with that first equation. I put negative 4 in for y and negative 2 in for x. And sure enough, on the right side there, half of negative 2 is negative 1, and negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So we get a true statement. Do the same thing to the other equation. Put negative 4 in for y, put negative 2 in for x, and sure enough, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, so that one also checks. Well, let's look at another example. Now, this is called an inconsistent system of equations. This is going to result in an answer that we have two parallel lines. Now, before we graph these, can you look at the equations and tell that the two are parallel? And if so, how would you know? Well, if you notice, they both have the same slope. And if they have the same slope, they are going to be parallel. Um, and the two lines are never going to cross. So if we were to go to graph these, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. Our first equation there, we would have a y-intercept of negative 5 and a slope of 2 thirds. So we go up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3, and so on. The other equation would have a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of 2 thirds. Now I can't go up 2 over 3, it runs off my screen, but I can go down 2 to the left 3. And we can see that those two lines are parallel. So the solution we would say in this case, if there are two parallel lines, we would say that there is no solution. And again, this would be a situation where we would say that they're inconsistent uh, system of equations. So in the previous example, we had a situation where we said that they were inconsistent because they were parallel. They didn't intersect. Now this is another unique situation. These do not intersect, but these are going to be what we call a dependent system of equations, which result in having the identical line. So if you notice, even though these equations look slightly different, you probably could recognize right away that they both have the same slope because 2 fourths reduces to 1 half. They would both have the same y-intercept. Now you would say that, well, wouldn't these always be obvious? These, if you notice, both of these equations are in slope-intercept form. It's real, real obvious in this situation when they're in slope-intercept form that they're the same line. It's a little bit trickier if they were in standard form. Um, then it's, a little, it's not quite as obvious all the time to see that they're the same equations, that they would be the identical line. So again, if you were to graph this one, they would both have a y-intercept of negative 1. They would both have a slope of 1 half. So the line would look something like this for the first one, and the second one would be the same. So they would be right on top of each other. Now technically, the solution here is we would say that there's an infinite amount of solutions. But that doesn't mean that we can just randomly pick a point on my grid. For example, the coordinate 1, 3 is not a solution to that system. However, the coordinate 2, 0 would be a solution. The coordinate 3 and 1 half, the coordinate 4 and 1, and I could keep going an infinite amount of times as long as those are points on the line. So technically, these are infinite solutions on the line y equals 1 half x minus 1. But um, we, would, we would accept the answer just infinite solutions. But you want to recognize that they are infinite solutions on the line y equals 1 half x minus 1. Now, let's go ahead and look to see how we could do some of this on a graphing calculator. So we're going to look. So why don't you guys go ahead and get out your graphing calculator. And we're going to be finding these intersection points. And I'll walk you through the process of how to do that. 
but the key is right here. You want to be using the, once we have the two graphs and we've changed the window settings so we can see where they intersect at, we're going to analyze the graph and look for their intersection. And I'll show you how to do that. So why don't you guys get out your graphing calculators and I'll do the same. Okay, so now on your graphing calculator, go to the home button. When you're on the home button, please do not use this graph under the scratch pad. Instead, use this graph icon. Now what we're going to do is we're going to type in that first equation. It's 2.5 times x plus 150. But before you hit enter, I want you to think about what this graph is going to look like. Where's the y-intercept going to be? Is the slope going to be increasing or is it going to be decreasing? So do you think it's going to fit on our screen? Hopefully you recognize that it will not because it has a y-intercept of 150. And right now our graph has a y-intercept, or the highest our y-axis goes is 6 and 2 thirds. So go ahead and hit enter, even though it's not going to show up. That's all right. Now if you try to type the next equation, you're not going to have any luck. You want to hit the tab button, so go over here, hit the tab button. And now this little text box pops up, and now we can type in the other equation, which is 5 halves x minus 12. And now we hit enter, and we see part of that graph. But we got to see the other one. We're trying to see where do they intersect at. So let's go to the menu button and go to where it says window zoom. Let's change our window settings. Now we know that the y minimum, I might want to move that down a little bit. Um, not exactly sure, but let's just go ahead and try that. We'll set it to be negative 50. But the key is the y maximum. The y maximum, the y intercept is 150. So I don't want to be exactly 150. Let's go a little higher. Let's do like 175 or 180, something bigger than 150, and hit OK. And that has changed our, our window so we can see both graphs. And you can clearly see that these two graphs are parallel, so they actually do not intersect. So let's look at the next equation, or system rather. So if you notice this one here, there's no solution because they're parallel. Let's look at the next one. Now the next one, the first equation in the system is the same as the previous one. But the next one's a, uh, quadra uh, a quadratic. So what I want to do is instead of having to redo all of this, because I can already see my um, blue line there for the first uh, equation, so I'm going to hit the tab button. Now hit the up arrow. So go over here on your touchpad and hit the up arrow once. So I'm going to delete this equation, which represents the red line, and I'm going to type in that quadratic, the 2x squared um, minus 5x plus 50. And now when I hit enter, that red line will change from being the original linear equation to being this quadratic. Now, I can see that this graph intersects the blue line in two places. So the process you're going to do is in your notes, you're going to first do menu. Anytime we want to get information from a graph, we're going to analyze it. Now we're going to hit intersection. Now if you notice, all I have is this dashed line. And it's not doing anything when I drag it around. Well, what I do want you to notice is down here where it says lower bound. I'm going to set this dashed line somewhere to the left of the first intersection point. And you can either hit enter or you can hit the center of your uh, touchpad over here. So I'm going to hit enter. Now notice that's changed to say upper bound now. So it says upper bound. So now if I drag my finger to the right, ooh, I get an intersection point there. Now if we drag it all the way over here, ah, it doesn't work. We have to do this twice. So I'm going to hit enter. So it gives me that point. I'm going to go through that process again to find the other intersection point. So menu, analyze the graph, find the intersection. This time I'm going to go down here. Don't worry about getting really close to the line. I can, I can even start way down here if I wanted to. And hit enter and get that shaded region. So they're going to find the intersection in that shaded region. There we have it. So I can hit enter so I can see it. So we get, oops, let me move this out of the way. There we go. So we have 9.19 and 173 is that intersection point, and negative 5.4 and 136 is the other one. So this one has two solutions. Let's do the other one together. So this time I want a new graph, because these, the next equations, the next system, 
doesn't have anything to do with these two. So go to the Home button. Again, go down here to the graph. The first equation is real simple. It's just a linear equation of 0.2x minus 5. Hit Enter. So this one we can see on our grid. Now we're going to go to uh, hit the Tab button. Now in order to do absolute value, we can't just find a symbol for absolute value. I think you can in your catalog, but it's more of a pain. What we're going to do is we're going to type in ABS and then parentheses. So we're going to say what's in parentheses is really our absolute value portion. So X minus 4. So go outside the absolute value parentheses and type in plus 1. Now when I hit enter, notice how they give me the correct symbol here for absolute value. And these lines, even if I drag my graph here, I can see that these do not intersect. So this is another situation, even though these two lines are not parallel, they don't intersect each other. So this is another situation where there's no solution. Well, there you have it. That's the end of this video. So hopefully you understand now how to solve a system by both graphing on paper and graphing on your calculator. So good luck now as you work on your assignment.